Sometimes the scariest thing isn't what you expect it to be. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we're gonna talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Uh, when this original incident happened about a year ago, I made a video that uh, said, Kyle Rittenhouse, you did a good job. That was the name of the video. Uh, Twitter, of course, took my tweet down when I posted that video, and YouTube tried to actually flag me for the video, which they removed upon appeal because there's nothing flaggable in it. Uh, so this has been a very contentious issue, right? And with the trial going on right now, and on Monday there'll be closing arguments, and then there will be, uh, you know, the jury will go into deliberation to decide, decide the fate of Mr. Kyle Rittenhouse. I thought it was an interesting time to revisit it. And one of the most fascinating and scary things that I've realized through this, this iteration is that people have these, like, to the core of their soul opinions of the matter, without ever having seen the video of the event, which again, is widely available, widely available. Uh, you can watch it right now. Like I said, you scroll back, there's a video on this channel about it uh, where I show all the clips of the shooting and I, I walk through them about why I think it's a clear self-defense case and nothing I said then uh, has changed. I, I still think it's a very clear self-defense shooting. It's one of the clearest self-defense shootings. So no one's ever watched these videos, which have been widely available for over a year. And you combine that with the absolute blatant lying by the mainstream news coverage of the event. Uh, and, and between those things, so you people who don't watch the videos, the news media is just lying, and then they have this like to the core of their soul opinion that Kyle is a murderer who belongs in jail, who's probably a white supremacist, and all these things that are not based on reality. Like nowhere in reality are those things actually based. Be because the thing about facts is they don't really change. Uh, but, but these people are completely living in a world that is not reality because one, they refuse to take in the information available to them. And two, they're being continuously lied to. Now, if you're like, well, what's an example of the lying? For example, uh, Gage Grosswitz, and I'm probably butchering that, is one of the people that Kyle shot. He's actually one of the ones that survived. He ended up shooting three people. Two didn't make it, one did. And this guy got his bicep uh, forcibly removed from his body by a bullet. Um, now, when he was interviewed, just I think yesterday, maybe this morning, he said you know, that he was raising his hands in surrender towards uh, Kyle Rittenhouse when Kyle shot him. Like, you know, I was, he was surrendering and then Kyle just cold blasted him, right? Well, the problem with that is one, there is footage that you can go watch right now of this guy pointing a gun at Kyle's head and then Kyle shooting him. That's one. Two, even in court, he admitted to that much. As they showed in the video and walked through the case, he admitted that Kyle did not shoot him until he pointed his gun at Kyle's head. Now, if that's not uh, being in danger for your life, having someone point a gun at you, then I don't really know how you're gonna define being in danger of your life. It's kind of what you call one of those self-evident truths. When someone points a gun at you, you're in fear for your life. And if you've been watching this trial, the prosecution has just been trying to throw darts and just see what sticks, because they have nothing. This case should have never went anywhere near a courtroom. And the prosecution's case shows that. It shows that they have nothing. They're just throwing darts to see what sticks, as, as you've, if you've been able to watch the trial. And again, people aren't watching the trial. They're only listening to the media lie to them, blatantly, verifiably lie. And then they, they refuse to watch the actual like raw footage of the event. And they have this opinion that he's so evil. And that is one of the greatest dangers that this trial has really exposed, is these people willing to kill you, willing to threaten your life for thinking that Kyle is innocent, all because they don't know what's going on in reality. And those are the kind of people, of course, that allow dictators to take over, that allow communism to spread, that allow bad things in the world to happen because they have the hear no evil, see no evil worldview, and they're just going to ignore what goes on in the world and then be the foot soldiers for tyranny. It's a story as old as time. In that sense, of course, I shouldn't be surprised. 
but the willful ignorance of a large swath of people it just it really is impressive to me i look at it and i'm genu genuinely puzzled over how someone could be that ignorant while feeling that strongly about something instead of just saying you know what i i didn't see the video and i haven't been following the trial I don't really know. I mean, it sounds bad for the media. Like, I would understand that. That would be one thing. But in, it's not just that. It's they won't admit to having not seen anything, and they'll be vehemently opposed on how Kyle is a murderer and a horrible person. And again, not living in reality. So I think that's a lesson to be learned there. One, don't be willfully ignorant. And two, you have to be aware that this is how a lot of people operate. They operate with minimal information, listen to a organizations that continue to lie to them, and then of course hold these opinions. And that's gonna come into play the worse and worse the state of the nation gets. Pay attention, prepare accordingly. Do brave deeds and endure.